Let's talk about design, innovation, and competition this week on Taka's Take. Thanks so much for tuning in for another episode of Photography Radio. My name is Tomasz, and today you are listening to Taka's Take with Taka Kayo, where he covers what's new and interesting in the world of photography, including digital, analog, mobile, and everything in between. Enjoy. Can you imagine your life without photography? No? Then you will love this show. And it doesn't matter if you're a DSLR, a mirrorless, or a mobile phone shooter. We're here to help your photography grow. This is Photography Radio. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Taka's Take, which is my take on photography news this week. So let's start now. In the world of digital photography, the brand new Fujifilm X-Pro3 is going to be coming out very shortly for those of you that have pre-ordered. But uh, there's been a lot of controversy about the design language of this camera, the hidden LCD screen. Now, I had an opportunity to shoot with it for about a month. And all I can say is that just by looking at something, you can't already decide that you know exactly how it's going to work. That's why there are those that get uh, paid a lot of money, but as well as go to school for many years to learn how design does affect the way that people interact with various things or objects or even spaces. Hence, you have urban planners, you have those that design cars, as well as cameras. And I can say that the design language of the X-Pro3 truly does help you to focus on the the craft of photography and not only having that hidden LCD screen, but as well as using virtual film, which is the classic negative, the brand new film that Fujifilm has created specifically for this camera, although we do hope that it will find its way to the X-T3. And for me, the X-H1 would be awesome as well. But having these two things really does give you that sort of mindset that you are shooting stills and you're focused on your imagery craft that is right in front of you. So I think uh, in that sense, this is a good move on Fujifilm's part, as well as for us as photographers. Staying on the subject of design, but moving on to mobile photography, Instagram has recently announced that they will now roll out the hidden likes globally. Now, those of us that live in Canada, we haven't been able to see likes using the app. You can see it if you go on uh, to using a browser like uh, Chrome or Safari, but in the app, you can't see the likes and they've decided to roll this out globally. And so speaking about design, They've now designed this app. They are trying to level the playing field by not showing likes because they feel that by seeing more likes, people seem to think that the photos are better, including those of us that are actually taking these photos. So by doing this, they're hoping to make it more democratic. But of course, we know that as long as Instagram maintains their algorithms and that their algorithms are not transparent. So we don't know why they pick certain photos to be featured. We don't always know when we are shadow banned or if our hashtags aren't or are working. As long as we don't understand that, I don't know how much of a difference this will make on the algorithm side, but I know from a a consumer uh, viewpoint that not seeing likes does not affect my engagement or how I enjoy using Instagram. In fact, I think it makes it a little bit better because not knowing how many people liked it, I don't know what business it is of me to know uh, what other people thought about a specific picture. Now, as a creator of the image, of course, you can actually see how many likes you have. It's just that you can't see what other people have liked. And that's always been the case with Instagram stories. And now they're going to roll it out to Instagram as well. So you let me know what you think, what the moral behind not showing likes for Instagram, and if that's going to really make a difference to you. But it is a newsworthy thing because, of course, uh, it is the largest photo sharing platform in the world. And it does affect us as uh, photographers, those of us that do use it. I do find it as an effective platform for me to showcase my photography and again staying on the subject of design changing the design of the software will affect the way that we engage with the photographs as well as the people that we follow on Instagram so I thought that was a very interesting story 
going back to regular digital photography and on the subject of competition, have you guys noticed that there are a lot of third-party lenses, uh, brands, but as well as lenses that are coming out? Now, we know the traditional brands, Sigma, Tamron, Tokina, and in the world of uh, M-Mount, probably, uh, Voigtlander and Zeiss, they've been around for decades. And even some of the lesser-known and uh, maybe lower-priced brands like uh, Samyang and Roken, and they've been around for a while as well. But there are newer brands now coming out that are coming out with cheap but very good quality third-party lenses. If you think of Seven Artisans, Bauer, Copen, Lensbaby, Make, Mayer Optics, uh, Miticon, Zhong Yui, and as we mentioned, Rokinen, Samyang, Venus Optics, and Viltrox. And Viltrox has their uh, their 85mm 1.8 uh, for the X mount and the E mount. And people, and I actually have a copy, a review copy, and I am impressed with the autofocus performance, the optical performance, as well as just the overall build quality. And I think this is really, competition is good for all of us, but it is something for the, the original equipment manufacturers like Sony, Canon, Nikon, Fujifilm, Olympus, Panasonic to really be watching out because what these uh, third-party lens manufacturers come out with are quite innovative and will really push these uh, these original uh, equipment manufacturers to create either better value or better optics at a premium price. Staying on the subject of third-party lenses innovation and competition. A perfect example is Surui's brand new anamorphic lens for Sony E-mount, Fujifilm X-mount, and Micro Four Third mount. It is a 50mm f1.8 with a 1.33 times anamorphic squeezing and de-squeezing. If you don't know what anamorphic lenses are, they're used in the movie industry to create a wider aspect ratio image without actually having to make the the actual film format. So the old movies were filmed on 35 millimeter film. The aspect ratio of movies are like 23 by 9, 21 by 9. They're quite wide. And so how do they get that much on such a non-wide format? Well, they squeeze the image and then in post, they de-squeeze. Now, up to this point, uh, for the longest time, anam anamorphic lenses were just cost prohibitive. If you type in uh, 50 millimeter anamorphic on B and H, uh, Airy has a 50 millimeter T1.9. It's fifty thousand dollars. Save a little money, you get a Cook 50 T2.3, and it's thirty thousand dollars. But because of competition, more and more of these companies, these third party brands, SLR Magic came up with their own 50 millimeter. T2.8 and it's $3,500. And $3,500 for a cinematic anamorphic lens is very, very inexpensive and cheap. Surui is coming out with theirs at $550 US. Now it'll be released sometime in January of 2020. And again, it shows how competition can create these innovations. And it's supposed to be very light, compact, small and cheap. And so how does this all come about? Is because of competition. So we're looking forward to testing it. I have a review copy coming my way and I'll let you know what I think about it once I receive it. Staying on the subject of competition, Huawei has Next Imaging Awards 2019 winners announced. And this is a reasonably new awards. I think they started in 2017. What I found interesting about this competition was that four out of the six judges are Magnum photographers, including Steve McCurry. And they just announced these winners. They are going to have uh, images exhibited both in the Grand Palais in Paris, as well as the Forbidden City in Beijing. So that seems like a pretty cool competition to win. Now, if you go to the uh, Next Imaging website, uh, this is what they have to say uh, in the uh, about section. It says, the next in next image refers to the next generation of photographers using the next generation of tools to create and spread the next generation of visual content, all with new forms of interaction and feedback. And so as traditional photographers ourselves, I'm a film photographer, but now we can even say traditional digital photographers, which sounds a little odd that we really have to accept the reality that the mainstream photography really is mobile photography and having award celebrations uh, for this new uh, genre of capturing images 
does make a lot of sense. And that's something that we're just going to have to get used to. But I thought that was uh, interesting news for us and something for us to watch in the near future if more and more of these type of competitions will come up specifically focusing on mobile photographers. Let's talk about photographers. This year has been a tough year for losing some great photographers. Back in September, we lost Vancouver street photographer Fred Herzog. And on the same day, we lost Robert Frank, Swiss photographer, most famous for shooting the photo book, The Americans. And just this week, Terry O'Neill, a British photographer, he passed away at age 81. Now he was a inner circle photographer, we can call him that. He had access to rock stars, movie stars, as well as heads of state. Everyone from the Beatles. He photographed every James Bond since Sean Connery. He photographed Queen Elizabeth as well as Sir Winston Churchill. Now if you Google him and take a look at his photographs, you'll notice he kind of has a kind of a candid street photography style to most of his portraits and really that to me shows his innovation of that time where now it's become part of our photographic language to see that style of photography you know on the cover of rolling stones and things like that but back then when he was doing it it was quite unique and innovative and he kept on shooting right up till uh just the past few years and so uh look up his work and take a look what he's done i think um his portrait of um um, Elton John is probably the most famous of his portrait work, and you'll see how unique his style was. And so, Terry O'Neill, he shall be missed. Finally, the featured photographer of this week. And I want to feature not only living, but as well as working photographers today. And for this week, we are featuring Vancouver photographer, Greg Gerard. Now he's traveled the world and he's always traveling the world and living overseas. I just recently just got back from Paris from a book signing, but he's most known for his photo books. And the most famous photo book is probably City of Darkness, a life in Kowloon Walled City. And that was that very notorious city that was in Hong Kong that was eventually torn down before the handover. And Greg spent many years living there, documenting those that lived and worked within this walled city. And so you should really check out that photo book as well as look up the history of the Kowloon Walled City. And as well, the most recent photo book he released, Tokyo Yokosuka, 1976 to 1980. 83. And so you can see Greg spends many years before he creates his photo books. They're not just two, three month projects. And you can see that at his website, gregdrard.com of his various photo book projects. And he's known as a film photographer, although he does use digital when he has specific projects. He's shot with all the major publications and uh, magazines throughout uh, the uh, world uh, throughout the years. But uh, he prefers to shoot film. He likes to say it's not a fetish, but it gives him what he likes but one of the reasons why i'm featuring him is that he's also very active on social media specifically instagram so follow him at greg for a day and uh, there he doesn't uh let somebody else do it for him but really he curates and posts his own photos and you can see the range of the work he's done over the years and uh, he engages in the comment section as well and so follow him there at Greg for a day or uh, go check him out at uh, his website, greggerard.com. So that's it for this week. Thank you so much for listening and we will talk to you next week. Take care. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Hit subscribe on your podcast app. It would mean a lot for us to have you as our regular listener. Head over to photographyradio.com to drop your suggestion for future editions of Photography Radio or simply to say hello. We would absolutely love to hear from you. In the meantime, have a wonderful night and we will be back with more photography in your ears very soon.